I'm um, kind of a recovering serial um, enlightenment junkie. I know, of all the different things to be worried about, falling in and out of enlightenment is probably not the worst. <laughs> uh, my background is first and second generation Irish immigrant family. I was raised Irish Catholic, and uh, for those of you who know about that, that means from the moment of your birth till the moment of your death, you are pretty much swept away in a whole mythology of martyrs and saints which is not a really good idea when you're a little girl and very imaginative, because pretty soon you're going to be Joan of Arc. It's really exciting. <laughs> so for many, many years involved in the Catholic faith, I um, thought that I was on the path to enlightenment. I was on my knees a lot. I repented sins I didn't even commit. I was really spectacularly going to be enlightened. I worked really hard at it. But then suddenly the 70s came along and there was a lot of free love and um, as you probably know, the Catholic Church doesn't believe in birth control. So, you know, I kind of fell out of enlightenment, just briefly, okay? But the good news is that I am also a second generation recovering Virgo. And those of you who know a little bit about this know that being a second generation recovering Virgo is even worse than being a recovering Catholic. Um, Virgos have a very misplaced notion that cleanliness is next to godliness. And my mom took that to the absolute area of sainthood. My dad liked to tell this story. He got up one night to take a pee, and he comes sneaking back into bed, and what does he find? My mom has completely made the bed. Uh, uh, military corners on the bed, the spread up, the uh, throw pillows all the way across it. So right then and there, I knew that my path to enlightenment through being a Virgo was probably not the best route. That obsessive compulsiveness of the Virgo was just a little bit over the top for me. So I wanted really much to break the spell of both of those two falling in and out of enlightenments. What could I do? What could I do? I decided to become a yoga. I studied yoga with the same fervor I took on every other thing in my life. I studied hard, I went to yoga classes and finally began to teach yoga. Wow, finally something that I could really get into and I broke the spell of being a Virgo by moving into a commune with 12 other people. Some goats, some chickens, some hamsters, some kids, some dogs, some cats, almost all in one place at one time. Um, and so cleanliness was not a big virtue in hippiedom. So two things, I broke the spell, I'm on my way to enlightenment, I'm practically there now. Um, and one day, sitting around late at night, probably inviting a little natural botanical of one sort or another, uh, I thumbed through the, the Yoga Digest and discovered a little contest, and the contest said something like, have you had a hard road to enlightenment? If you have, write us about it, and you perhaps can win an all-expense-paid week with the big wazoo yogini back in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which I'm a, I'm a California girl, I'm by the beach in Santa Cruz, I'm in this big commune. Wow, sounds good, sounds good. So I wrote about the Catholicism, I wrote about Joan of Arc, I wrote about being a Virgo, and totally forgot about it. A couple of weeks later, I get the letter. It says, you have won an all expenses paid trip one on one to be with this grand master yogini in Grand Rapids, Michigan. His name is Shane. Shane, does that ring any bells for you? For me, I didn't really care what he was. His name was Shane, you know? So I got very, very excited. I'm on my way. Enlightenment at last. This is it. This is what I've been waiting to plunge into. I kind of looked down at my outfit. Oh, you probably need shoes in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You probably need something more than this little flimsy cotton dress. What am I going to do? All right, so I made a little deal with the guy next door. The guy next door was a, um, a leather worker. And what he did for me was say, oh, I'll trade you. 
you take care of my Montessori monster children and uh, trade me a few of those little botanicals you have growing in the backyard and I'll make you an outfit. And he did a beautiful leather jacket with fringe that came down and beads and boots that came up here with a little sporty cuff. Not only was I going to be enlightened, I was going to look damn good. <laughs> Got on the plane, flew to Grand Rapids, so excited, enlightenment is mine, it's almost in my fingertips. Swung open the door to the airplane, poof! What did I get? Snow, sleet, rain, hail, freezing ass cold. No one told me it was going to be like this in enlightenment. Okay? What I actually bumped into was a guy about five feet tall with big bottle glass glasses, three hairs on the top of his head. And apparently Nirvana is kind of masked as Catatonia. He looked like he was from another planet. And he said, welcome to my world. I almost got back on the plane, but I didn't. I sloshed through the, mud, the, the airport, the snowy airport. The ashram turns out to be a very recently converted cow barn. And when I say recently converted, I would say 15, 20 minutes ago he was converted. And so we go in and I expect great things and he shows me around and what do I see? In every corner, big dappled spider webs with really creepy things hanging off of them and little scurry beasts going back and forth across the floor. And what's that scratching noise in the wall? Oh my God. And he tells me what the regimen will be like for the next few days. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can do this. I have taken the plunge. I am here now. It's okay. I can manage this. This is my last shot of enlightenment. <clears throat> Shane tells me, 10 hours a day, we will uh, assume our yoga postures. Six hours a day, we will chant sutras. Four hours a day, we will meditate. Now, if you're doing the math with me, boys and girls, <laughs> that leaves four hours to sleep. And uh, those four hours to sleep uh, were supposed to be sitting upright in a full lotus position, concentrating on your third eye. I was in way over my head. Suffice to say, after three or four days of sitting on a cold, drafty floor in the middle of a converted barn with lots of creatures flying back and forth, when it came to meditation, that's the knock of enlightenment over there, <laughs> urging me, um, <clears throat> my meditation consisted primarily of this. Oh God, please God, if you're there, I need a steak, I need some french fries, I need a Monte, Monty Python episode, and I promise, when I get home, I will vote for Richard Nixon. I will never smoke marijuana again, and I will not seek enlightenment now or ever. I know I was supposed to be thinking about higher things, but I couldn't help it. Sometimes out of the corner of my eyes, things would scurry by. It was very scary. Finally, on the very last day, Shane went into town to pick up the next mm, victim? No, novitiate. Yeah, yeah, that's it, novitiate. Um, and what happened was I got to feeling really bad about being such a horrible student all along and decided I needed to redeem myself quick or I was going to not have enlightenment ever again. So what I decided to do was, while he was gone, clean up the whole place, knock down the spider webs, sweep up the rat's nest, do the big pile of dishes with the black mold growing all over it. I was going to redeem myself in the last 15 minutes of my bout of enlightenment. I was really excited. I worked like a demon, like a dervish around the place, knocked those webs down, got those feral cats out, got those rat nests. Beautiful. I am absolutely immaculately going into my Virgo mode and feel like I have redeemed myself. I hear the car drive up. I rush over very, very quickly, get in my full lotus position, assume this beatific look, have my eyes closed because I know he's going to be so impressed with how far I've come in my enlightenment journey. The door swings open. There's a small gagging sound. I think, oh, he's so impressed. I, I made him think so good of me. No, this is what I hear. Caitlin, how could you? What have you done? How could you interfere in the lives of these sentient beings? My, my mice, my spiders. You've learned absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's the moment I totally 
suddenly fell out of enlightenment permanently for all times. But he was wrong about one thing. I did learn something. Cleanliness is definitely not next to godliness. Thank you.